What is good? We're back down to a bipod. We're going to hit you with another rookie profile tonight. We got Rashi Rice, SMU. Coming in on player for, or, uh, PFF at 6'3", 206, but came in at the Senior Bowl with the old Rashad Bateman. He did. <laughs> six, oh, six foot 200. He Batemaned us. Um, so, you know, we were hoping that Rice was going to be one of those bigger bodied guys because there's not a ton of these bigger guys in this class. But Playing in that conference, he looks that big. Right. I don't know if he's wearing lifts in his shoes or what, but he doesn't. He looks bigger than six foot out there um everybody's weighing in small at the senior bowl or the shrine bowl yeah i think this was he's at the senior bowl yeah yeah uh, but yeah no i mean this this was an interesting one that 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 did take the wind out of your sails a little bit six three two oh six seems a lot more tantalizing than six foot 200 but yeah you know his game his game is still pretty fun to watch it's, he's been a fun guy to kind of learn about what well, you can watch sure yep. uh a little bit more on the bio he if you watched our early breakdowns, or not breakdowns, but we did some wide receiver stuff with Riley, and we did a rookie mock, we had him listed with a birthday of 1998. That's what it was originally on the internet. And then looking at like a Reddit feed, it was redacted. Someone hit us in the comments and was like, actually, he's a 2000 baby. And then if you look at PFF, pretty sure it has 2001 on there. 2001 on so PFF. I think that's a typo. I think everywhere else has him as a 2000 April, right? So that would make him 23 in April coming in the coming draft. Which people don't like, but it's much better than 25. <laughs> Right, yeah. 23 I can handle, a fresh 23. But that's probably why he's not super high on people's radar. He, not a ton to watch about him. Uh, just a three-star recruit coming out of high school from Richland High School in Texas. Proposed to run a 4.36. I don't think he's that fast. If Addison isn't 4.39, he's not 4.36. Yeah, I don't think he's that fast either. Still pretty fast. Yeah. You know, I, I do like that. Not a ton, you know, to, to find on him bio-wise, just like film. Track and field star in high school. So you like that. And that helps. Sure. That'll help him at the combine for sure. Help him maybe even inflate a number that isn't what, right there. But, like, he is fast with his pads on. Uh, we can look at the metrics. If you go to player profile, there's not a thing on this man from a metric standpoint. Uh, no breakout age, no dominator. So do did some math myself. Talked with JB from the Dynasty Theory podcast he's he's our boy he's our go-to guy Sorry. for metrics <laughs> metric consultant well, for sure and he's got a great spreadsheet on on his patreon that, that i suggest you take a look at if you're interested dominator 30.4 percent and that's taken year by year with the total games by the team so it doesn't factor in games played which i think is what player profiler does their metrics based on is a, a per game basis which i think i kind of like that better because it makes, makes a little bit more sense adds a little bit more context Oof, easy dirty word yeah breakout age is in the 22 year old like he just broke out basically and so that people don't like that because he's already a little old and he didn't break out till he was old so he can't be good and right? also not at the power five you right. know well i mean traditional conference sometimes they conference don't care USA. about that if, yeah. if it's not it's not great when you didn't break out yeah you know in, in and you're already a little older so that those right. are your, your strikes right now right a dot 11.2 which is was ranked tied for 54th this past year 14 yards per reception ranked tied for 36 this past year target share 30.4 percent this past year so that's not terrible um, but I don't have you know I think player profiler has the percentiles of all the players they've gathered data on and so if they don't if they're not telling me where he ranks with everybody I don't quite know what percentile that stuff is in so that's why you'll see like an NA, but you know, I know that the dominator, if you can get it above 30, that's that that means you can potentially be a wide receiver one, I think is what, what the the glossary or the uh, the legend says. Right. So so that's encouraging. Uh we can look at the overall stats, which that's you know, the twenty two season is, is really he just murked, you know. Yeah. I mean didn't didn't have a terrible twenty one. No. Um did get better every year. Right. So you like that, but did play four years. So it's not an early declare. That also is a 
thing the analytical crowd does not like at all. In, in 21, they did have Danny Gray, who was the third third round draft pick of the Niners. Um, so he he moves he moves out, and and Rice was uh, you know a good bit in the slot, 93 percent in 2001 uh, with Gray there, and then Gray leaves, and you know that leads to the the season that you know is right that we're where in he currently was where he was just out wide, yeah, and it was just absolutely absurd from a volume and you know doing. You know, good stuff with that volume. Right, which, you know, he didn't play in any postseason play because – so when I'm showing you guys these stats on all these profile videos, uh, the, the the career stats take into account bowl games and playoff games or whatever or, or championship games. When I'm telling you where they ranked against other players, it's only for the regular season so that everyone is on the same playing field. Um, but in 2022, 156 targets – that was good for second, uh, 96 receptions. That's good for fourth, 1,344 yards, second overall, 10 mm-hmm. touchdowns, tied for 11th. The Yak, 593, that's good for third. Yak per reception, 6.2, tied for 23rd. 19 forced missed tackles, that's tied for sixth. Uh, my man's out there doing work after the catch. That's fantastic. Three point zero five yards per route run. Uh, yeah, I, had, I don't know what I, think I, I had him at eleven or at ten there. So I don't, we got a little bit of a discrepancy, but it doesn't matter. Okay, you can double check that. Um, Hit me in the comments section below. Uh, Thirty three contested targets, which is good for eighth, and then sixteen contested catches, which is also good for eighth. Um, and then I, th- I believe that JB just added. Uh, the contested target percentage for the final year of his career, which was his best year, so that works out well, was only 21.15%. So that's a green box, which means, because there's a new stat that, that the metrics crowd really wants to know is how many of your targets were contested, because that would tell us if you're separating or not, which mm-hmm. means Nikhil Harry, is, that's why he's bad, mm-hmm. is he, he was had a lot, of, I think he was like in the 37%. Of, of contested catches targets so under that threshold I was surprised a little bit I thought maybe he had too many contested catches because he does catch a lot of contested balls he's a beast when it comes to contested balls like if Quentin Johnston had his contested catch ability and his attack of the ball like I'd really have a hard time knocking Quentin for almost anything you know right like everyone could be knocked for route running and drops you know what I mean in college like I'm not really gonna for the most part yeah like if you're great at those things, then that's a plus. But if you're bad at those things, it's not necessarily a huge negative for me, anyways. You know, was really was really a joy to watch in the contested catch area. Yeah, it's um, a, had had a the A dot was at seven point three in the in the slot and eleven point two out wide. Um, so you know, bump up, but nothing crazy in the A dot. But just at the volume, like you said, the A dot's going to be tough to have a ridiculous number in when you have one hundred fifty six targets. Yeah, and they, um, they threw a lot of screens and stuff to him to yeah, get they, him involved run, in space. They run a fast off paced offense. Sure, um, sure. Nine drops on the year, um, but again, 156 targets. So 66 contested targets over his career. Caught 32 of them. That's a 48.5 percent contested catch rate. So it's pretty pretty decent. Yeah, I mean this this is uh, was it was a pretty fun eval. Uh, not knowing a ton about him, but seeing him obviously when you're looking at all these other guys, you see him at the top of these lists with these, you know, big egregious numbers. Um, and I would I would say I wasn't disappointed when, you know, you dive into it. And it you know, obviously, you could call it a little bit of compiling because that you know that was the guy they funneled pretty much everything to. Uh, but you know, and and the and the, the competition isn't good, and he's a little older, so you got some of the competition is good though. No, no, some of the some of the competition is on par, and right. some of it is you know they, all the other guys play shitty teams too, so you can't hold it against they, them. But they, they play more than your North, average North Texas, Lamar, right. uh, N- Tulsa, Tulane, yeah, Memphis, but then they also played Tulsa and Tulane aren't Maryland, TCU, right. UCF, Cincinnati, Houston, USF. Yeah, yeah. Well, USF wasn't very good, but. No, but but those other teams, you know, and, and what I did like about him was that he he showed up in those games. Yes, yes, against better competition, he was having some of his best games. Yeah, no, I wasn't. I wasn't saying knocking the competition to say that I didn't like him. I'm just saying that's a. I think that's a reason why you could say that he's not that that big group of five, power five, you know, kind of team. He's older, and the breakout wasn't until later. So you know, those are going to be things that knock you down and put you not in the running to maybe be a first round fantasy draft player but now you know those those knocks probably 
move you down a little bit, maybe into the second round. How deep into the second round do we go with Rasheed Rice? I don't know. Does he make it into the second round right now? I would say I would believe so that he would be in the second round for me. I mean, when we did drafts. that startup with the Dynasty Domain guys, they he was like 212 or 211 or right, something. And, right and, in there. And in that crowd, I would think he'd be knocked down a little bit because they might be more consensus in terms of – maybe not giving people the benefit of the doubt just yet and looking at the film and trusting your eyes, you might maybe, but then the fucking stats from 22 are amazing, but right. you know, he's too old and, and all, this, you know, so I could see, but the fact that he went late to there tells me that he he's a second round pick in your dynasty it, draft. It seems like it. I mean, we'll see what the quarterbacks pan out to be and the tight ends pan out to be. If you're premium and super, and this was a super flex startup draft, sure. super flex tight end premium. You know, he may get pushed down, to he's the bottom definitely, second, he's order. Definitely maybe second. even into the third round, but and that's a steal. I'll take him all fucking day. Yeah, I think I think once you get into the third round, that he's he's a joy to have, and, and he may very well work his way back up into that second with good with some some pretty good draft capital. Like if he could have some decent draft capital, could show up well at the combine. It's, there's there's potential to, to the testing for him is going to be really crucial if, if if it's if it's good and off the charts and as fast as or right. anywhere near as fast as they say it is right yeah, there i i looked um, at several places and they were all saying he's so fast but then you, you do see him getting caught and there are some angles and you know yeah. but like i, I, just don't, I don't think he's an absolute that. blazer um, if he can run in the four fours if he can run sub four five I, agreed then i think that'll be a plus for him and then if he can do anything else well then you know but the combine is going to be big for him you know right not being six three 206 right. was a bummer because like right. i said to relieve this off there wasn't a whole lot of there's not a whole lot of huge guys in this class which we talked about with addison they were he doesn't need to be that way and, and True. That, but those but are the, you thought he was those are the eye candy ones and and you, you thought, thought you were getting three. another bigger guy here six foot 200 if if he can go out and play like a like chris godwin then i'll take him all day long i'm not that's not confident i chris don't think godwin, he's but. yeah i don't think he's Probably not as good as Chris Godwin. If he can give me that kind of production, like, and 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 like he's not a ton to watch. I think there's like a couple individual games on YouTube, a couple highlight films. We had, we had access to two all twenty twos, right? Mm -hmm. um, so not a ton to watch, but what you can watch, you know, it, it's pretty intriguing. Well, there's, there's you can find other cut ups of him playing other teams too. They're just not twenty all twenty twos. Which no, I said there's a couple yeah, on yeah. YouTube of individual games and then a right. couple highlight videos. But, but I mean, he can. He kind of can do. He can get you long. He can get you short. He he plays physical and tough. Um, yeah. You know, obviously the speed seems to be pretty good, but his route running seems to be, you know, at least at a at a you know a, a good threshold where it's not a problem. I think it's it's he has the athletic ability to run a decent route tree and, and a, be a pretty, you know above average route runner i think is in the realm of possibilities for him i would agree i like i like i just like the way he attacks the ball like he he goes after the ball whether that's coming back to the ball you know on a comeback route or a zone play or in the scramble drill and then also when the ball is in the air like he you know a lot of players we knock mvs all the time and we knock uh, chase claypool because when they're going down the field and go for a contested catch. They're letting the ball come to them. A little bit of that with Quentin Johnston. But when he's when the ball's in the air, he is attacking that ball. And there's a lot of pass interference calls too. Yeah. Like it's either going to be his ball or it's going to be pass interference. So like I would argue that that contested catch rate, if you take into account pass interference, is much greater than fifty percent. And and that's just as good as catches for NFL teams. And so the you know and then he's got late late hands. You know he he, he waits to the last second to put them up there. Uh, it's very natural looking. He plucks the ball out of the air. You know, he goes right. outside of his frame. He catches it behind him, just similar to the, all the other guys that we've covered so far. Um, I like that he showed up against against better competition, uh, and, and then pretty pretty damn good after the catch. You know, he's got yeah. great contact balance, and they they do get him a lot of screens and he's get him the third ball in yak. space. I mean, right, right, third and yak. He, Nineteen forced missed tackles, sixth. He's just he seems like he's pretty good all around. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, that's that's what I came away with. Rice is he excellent in really any one thing? Not necessarily. Um, there's but there's there's more to like than to dislike. I think um, the, the yeah. things that I dislike, I, I I don't really. He doesn't have control over him being six foot two hundred necessarily, but he plays great. He doesn't 
he, he went to SMU. I think he had other offers to go other places. I think he chose to go to SMU, maybe, maybe down uh, a step from some of the other levels of competition that he could have went to. And, and when, when he got a shot and got his, his shine, he, he crushed it with it. I mean, oh, one last thing is the blocking. Yeah. Well, that, that goes, that kind of fits right in with the profile of the picture that you've been painting. I mean, he's, he's a physical guy. He He's not going to let it's his or, or nobody's kind of, kind of deal and and he takes that same attitude into you know blocking and and whatever that assignment would be yeah love the blocking like springing some big runs you know playing doing his job like clearing out the way if the ball's not going to him he's usually a decoy and it's running through him everyone in the stadium knows he's about to get the ball and was still crushing it uh good interview got a little maybe brandon ayuk yeah, well, I don't know. I'm just throwing guys out there. We don't play the comp game very much. I didn't, I didn't think of anything, but yeah. as you were talking about him, I'm like, you know, I think he yeah. could could be a, a not quite as How's good that Chris wingspan? Godwin. Yeah, Bateman isn't the worst. A little you know. bit of all, like a little bit surprising speed sometimes. Right. Smaller than we thought he was going to be. Hopefully, he doesn't get drafted by the Ravens. <laughs> that would be ideal. Where's your but favorite lane? I think I think you hit it on the head. The the combine is is going to be if he goes out there and puts up good numbers in that. I think that that helps the draft capital in the real draft, which will help the draft capital for your rookie drafts. It'll make it rise anyway. It might not help you out. You might might not get the deal on. And rice, well, you know, maybe it's just average. You know, and I think I I do want to take swings on this guy. I think it'll be obtainable. You know, especially in leagues who don't follow Twitter and don't listen to this shit. They're just doing their thing and. Like Rasheed Rice is gonna be pushed down, I think. Maybe, but maybe he does have some gaudy numbers, so that they could. That twenty-two, yeah, was ridiculous. Yeah, like top I'm, ten in almost everything. I'm excited to get to Hutchinson. Uh, I, I want to see what's going on there. The Iowa State Xavier. Gym. Yeah, um, he took him in one of those mocks. I took him in every mock late. Which we be mocking Four, it up. You know, you got to get over to the pro. Discord, the Patreons. We be mocking it up in this off season. Oh yeah, getting after it. We'll be we'll do at least two or three mocks a month over there. And if you're uh, a patron, you get doing it. startups and rookie mocks, mm -hmm. and you know extra shows. So little Patreon plug for you. We're about to be getting. In. We'll do at least three extra shows a month over there. Um, That's you and, can promise that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. Um, Discord, and we're just gonna because you're going we're tomorrow gonna be, night. We're going to be mocking it up uh, a, a decent and amount gonna, of the offseason. You're going to talk about the mock tomorrow night? Yeah, we're going to have – we got our patrons on. Um, we're going to have – And we just put the stream yard out there. We yeah. let people come on the show and talk with us. Like, Right. You can either watch and be in the chat or right. you can hop hop in the link. I think we could fit 10 people up in the room at once. Obviously, maybe you don't want quite that many, but I no, know, I know people don't have a problem. All, people don't have a problem dipping out too. Right. Say, hey, you know, yeah. see your last week or, you know. Let whatever in. So, uh, come come join us five bucks a month. Hang out with us. Um, it's gonna be a fun off season. The very we'll least, hit that subscribe we'll button on this YouTube rookie page for sure. When we're done with all this stuff, so. Uh, but we need to get far enough to get rookie rankings. So yeah, so that's we'll what have, we're doing. You're coming right along with us. So yep, we're getting there. This is. I think that's. I feel like this is still earlier. Every year we get earlier because you got to have it earlier. Yeah, I go early. You gotta fix, hurry well, we're it gonna up. to get that combine in the draft, and then things are really gonna. Yeah. You know, start to firm up a little bit get, so. we're gonna have some more guests got angelo coming on at some point jb we got to get him back on the riley mock with riley by masters coming but, back on yeah we're gonna get riley talk. we'll have the dynasty domain back on mm -hmm. yeah that was a good discussion gotta stay tuned we're about to have some guests it's about to be a lot of fun get, get different voices up in here you guys get to hear us all the time so we're gonna bring you guys in and, and have other guys give their opinion on on the show and uh, get a different voice in your ear and let you know that there is other shows out there. So, well, why would you go? <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. We appreciate y'all for joining us. Let us know in the comments where you got Rasheed Rice. What do you know about him? Let me give me some more bio. What you, do you any know SMU about fans? Rasheed. Rice. Any of them SMU fans? Hit me with something clever in the in the comment section. Uh, but intrigued, very intrigued. Can't wait to get into this. All this, man. I'm more excited about these rookie profiles than I am the Super Bowl coming up. Go Chiefs. Let's go. Appreciate y'all. Peace.